Hello everyone. So today's video is arguably the most exciting video of the year, at least for me. Um, today, I'm starting my new sketchbook. Now this just arrived in the mail a couple minutes ago, hours ago. Oh wait, my address is running, one second. <laughs> I feel like I finally learned my lesson with the whole like not doxing myself thing. So that's great. <laughs> Anyways, this is my new sketchbook. As you can tell, it's very, very big. Anyways, let me open this thing up. So, I present to you all my fifth sketchbook. <laughs> oh, and also a silhouette of my, my face, my head. Hi. Now, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I chose a different color than black and gray because I really wanted to change. That's the whole theme going on here. I wanna change and I wanna like, challenge myself, break out of my comfort zone. Also, a main difference between this brand and Moleskine is the paper is very white, which I like. Uh, I got a little tired of the cream colored paper. Let me actually put it here for comparison. Like it's very much tinted, um, but yeah. So this sketchbook here is A4 plus size. I think it's wider than A4 or taller than A4, I'm not sure. I'll have to research. Um, and then it's 150 GSM, which is pretty good. Again, I need to research what Moleskine was for comparison. And um, what's that saying? Two bookmarks, oh cool. Stickers, labels, and one pocket at the back, which is great. Anyways, now that I'm done introducing my sketchbook, <laughs> Today's video is a collaboration with Upcrate Art Supplies. Upcrate is basically a subscription-based uh, art supply thing. They send you like a bunch of supplies each month if you're subscribed to them. And yeah, they very kindly offered to send me this for free. And I've done collaborations with them in the past, I think two times. And uh, I'm really excited for this one. I told them that I wanted a break from acrylic markers because the two previous times I did get acrylic markers. Um, so yeah, whatever's in here is not acrylic markers, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, I already unboxed this, so like, I'm actually lying to you guys. I know for a fact it's not acrylic markers, but yeah, I'll, I'll roll that footage and then we can have fun with it. All right, so here's the unboxing for the Upgrade Art Supply box. Now, I forgot to mention in the intro that we actually have a discount code, but I don't know what it is just yet because they might have to update it. So I'll just put the discount code on the screen somewhere. Um, so yeah, <laughs> anyways, thank you again so much to Upgrade for the discount code, the free box, like it's, it's great. And I had a lot of fun with this box today. Well, not today, but during this video. Anyways, here are the supplies provided. We have this green pencil, um, it's called Color Peps, I think. And then next up, we have this really cool, like dried watercolor set by Vivia Colors, or sorry, Viva Color. No, no, Viviva? Oh, okay, okay. I, the whole time I thought it was Vivia. Anyways, it's these really nice like watercolor sheets. Next we have like the Art Liner by Spectrum Noir Fine Liner pen. And finally we have the Upcrate Travel Brush, which is this thing here. That was it for all the art supplies, but Upcrate also provides a brochure, which is coming up in a few seconds, anytime now. Here it is. Yeah, it's the bottle post or something like that. And the artist this time was Katbach. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So they just offer a guide to the materials and also examples by a ton of other artists on how to use those materials. And we got these really cute stickers from the artist. Uh, I really love the cat stickers, they're adorable. And this print, which I have hanging on my desk right now. The final thing provided is this really cool paper, but I don't use it in this video. Okay, I'm gonna admit, this was gonna be just like a normal starting my new sketchbook, upgrade collab video, but now things just got personal. I just came back from watching the Into, sorry, Across the Spider-Verse movie, and I am filled with such like intense inspiration, and like, yeah, I'm actually so glad I didn't start this video yet, because it would have been so painful not doing fan art and just like, 
completing something I started. So yeah, this is gonna be a fan art video. I'm gonna be doing Into the Spider-Verse theme stuff. Also, another thing that happened that's gonna change the course of this video. Um, I got a lot of comments on the video I just posted, which was the sketchbook tour for sketchbook number four and four and a half. So many people have been asking me how I fill up my sketchbook spreads. So I feel like it would be cool if I made a series of videos where I talk in depth about how I fill my sketchbook spreads. Um, so like I'd include a little bit more real time footage, a little bit more like commentary as I'm filling up the spread on like the choices I make and stuff like that. It wouldn't really be a tutorial. It would kind of be a tutorial, but not, not quite. Um, and I make several parts or like several episodes basically. So I was thinking like, why not make this video the first video in that sort of series, like mush everything together into just like one chaotic, crazy video. I don't know, that's kind of my style. I like mushing things together. Not everything has to have like super organized, planned out kind of thing. It could just be spontaneous, you know? I love being spontaneous. So basically this is fan arts, how I film my sketchbook, starting a new sketchbook, and upgrade. It's like so many things. Now, before I get into like the first couple pages of the sketchbook, I really need to design the cover of the sketchbook. And to do that, we have a bunch of stickers from some different artists. So these three stickers are from flesh.png on Instagram, I think. Anyways, <laughs> these next two stickers, I don't know if I'm putting both of them, but I definitely want to put the strawberry rabbit. But these are from Sketches of Shay on Instagram and the same username on YouTube. I've been really enjoying watching her videos and also just seeing her art on Instagram. So if you're looking for a new like art YouTuber to watch, I highly recommend. I love her stuff. All right, so here is a time lapse of me picking out stickers. <laughs> I thought I was gonna like leave this in real time, but it ended up being so long. So I just sped most of it up. Oh, don't worry, we have even more stickers. This is like my scrapbook paper trolley thing. This thing has a lot of like high quality stickers. And then we just have the Amazon stickers here and here. Let's just put that there. Okay, this there. And then I put a bunch of the Amazon stickers here. Again, I have like a ton of Amazon packet sticker things like hefty okay what else yeah I think that's it oh wait there's these cool Marvel tags they're not stickers but I feel like they lay nicely on the cover like they match the color scheme of like red um, that's it that's everything we can use from this thing it has wheels so it's really handy All right, so I don't know if all these stickers are gonna fit, especially since I do wanna write, you know, sketchbook number five in the center here. So I think it'll take some experimentation. Okay, so here I'm just experimenting with the placement of the stickers. Uh, the most difficulty I had was where to put the fish sticker because I either was gonna put it at the top or in the center at the bottom. And I felt the center at the bottom just looked way more cool. Now, I lost some of the footage for writing sketchbook number five in the center of the sketchbook, but basically I did that with a Posca pen, a white Posca pen, and then I went over it with off-white acrylic paint. Um, so the acrylic paint is what made it really thick and uh, like pop out. Anyways, on this intro page, I put this hello, my name is whatever sticker that I got from uh, an event that I went to. Uh, I thought it looked really cool, especially since I was going with the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse theme. And then here I'm just collecting scrapbook material. Also, earlier on, I was swatching the watercolors. Uh, the Viva, the, like the Viva watercolors, they provide a spot to swatch all the stuff. Oh yeah, this here is from a pair of Adidas sneakers I got as a graduation gift. Um, so I saved them and I'm so glad I saved this like wrapping paper because it matches the theme again um, since you know like Miles wears Nikes and these are Adidas <laughs> it's a little disgraceful but I don't know I love Adidas I'll always be 
an Adidas girly. But yeah, here I'm just putting the wrapping paper and this is all entirely unplanned, I have to say. So my process when it comes to scrapbooking pages is to just see whatever I've managed to like squirrel away for months and months and just see whatever fits. And a lot of stuff gets scrapped and then placed again and then scrapped. So like this thing here is actually a tag from a pair of Empire pants that I bought. They were like skate pants. Um, I love those pants. <laughs> but I end up taking it off later on. Also, uh, I wrote my details on the space provided, but I really hated how it looked. Like I hated my handwriting. So I covered it up with this stationary pile um, sticky note thing. It's like grid sticky notes, they look really cute. I don't know if it really shows up on camera, the grid pattern on them, but yeah, um, things just keep changing. And with the scrapbooking style that I do, it's so easy to just like, start over, cover mistakes up. It just adds to the aesthetic kind of. Like the more mess ups I make, the more scrapbooky it ends up looking. So it's kind of a win-win. It's still stressful, um, but it, it, it works. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see, I removed the pants thing, the pants tag, uh, just because I didn't like how the blue looked with everything else. Um, I wanted to just wait and see like how all the other colors would look like. And this was my first attempt at actually sketching in my sketchbook. I erased it because the pose was just like too complicated. I didn't want to psych myself out with the first sketch in the sketchbook by like making it really complicated and being disappointed with the proportions. So I ended up just going with a simpler, like a more simple screenshot from the movie. Um, and have Miles there with his hands up. <laughs> I think it's really cute. Um, and yeah, honestly, I like how this sketch turned out and it was low stress, uh, helped me ease into it, to be honest. But yeah, there it is. I think I'll put the reference photo on screen for this entire video because it's just screenshots from the movie. So if you guys wanna use the same screenshots, please feel free. <laughs> I did not invent the movie or anything like that. But yeah, I also put some sound effects, like the wax sound effect, because during the movie, there were so many sound effects. It was really, it's really fun to watch. Um, and then I put some graffiti, stars. I am addicted to stars. And then I wrote the word twip, but it was meant to be thwip. Um, I think I correct it a little later by adding a really tiny H. Anyways, um, other than that, I feel like that was it for the first sketch. Here I'm using scrap paper again from Stationery Pal. Uh, like I keep cutting up these uh, scrap papers and then I don't like, um, I don't throw them out. I keep the tiny little scraps because I know eventually there'll be a tiny little gap that I'll need that paper for, if that makes sense. I feel like there is an easier way to explain that. Anyways, I'm using Mod Podge this entire video. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier on. I don't know if I make a materials list. If I do make a materials list and I'm boring you right now, I am so sorry. Anyways, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, here is another stationary pile piece of paper that I ripped, but I ripped it the wrong way. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna use it as a full like rectangle kind of thing. Anyways, um, yeah, oh, here I'm using paper from my old, old sketchbook. Um, sketchbook number four, but the incomplete one. So I'm keeping my promise and I'm actually not letting the paper here go to waste because it's good quality paper. It works with a lot of different mediums and I like it. So here I cut out an entire page and I'm gonna use it to draw on top of, like draw cutouts. And those cutouts are gonna go on top of like the shoes and the shoe wrapping paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's another screen screenshot redraw. Um, I've seen a couple, uh, artist to use the screenshot specifically just because it's so iconic so I'm gonna put the screenshot on the screen and honestly feel free to use it if you like it as well um, yeah he's basically just like jumping in the air and there's like a giant neon green like star shape behind him so yeah I, I almost ran out of space there so like if the proportions are off it's because I had to squeeze the leg in the space that I had. I should have like shifted it more to the right side of the page, but it's okay. Also, uh, I thought I was gonna add a boom sound effect, but I ended up erasing that, I think. Oh yeah, here I was about to draw Pavit from like 
the Mumbatan Earth 50101 universe. <laughs> Um, but then I ended up scrapping it just because the pose was way too complex and I needed more room for it. Like, I it, it, I didn't want to make it squished. I wanted to dedicate more time and space for that drawing when I eventually do it. Also here on the side, uh, I think that's like the final drawing that I do, well like drawing wise, Spider-Verse fan art wise. Um, but yeah, that's Spider-Punk. I forget his real name. Oh wait, Hobie. Yeah. Spider Punk, also known as Hobie, with Miles. Uh, I really like that pose. I just wish I exaggerated the leaning more on Miles' end. Like, I wish Miles was like slouched a bit more, so, as if he's like drowning under his weight. <laughs> but yeah. Also, there's like a rainstorm happening right now. So if there's background noise, that's what it is. Um, finally, it's raining here where I live. Like, we've been having crazy, crazy humidity and also just like smog and smoke from the forest fires here in Canada. But yeah, the weather has been horrific for the past week, I think. Yeah, there was a time where it was nice hotness or like nice warmness, but then it just got like so bad. It was like you were in an oven. So yeah, I'm really glad it's raining. <laughs> Anyways, back to what's going on on screen. I'm cutting out all the stuff that I just drew. And uh, yeah, this took a little bit of time. <laughs> just like dragging on. But I like how the different toned paper looks together. So honestly, I'm really glad that I have this moleskin leftover paper because that means like I can do different toned paper stacked on top of each other because the Liucha whatever thing sketchbook the new sketchbook has very 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 white paper so it's like blue white meanwhile the like the moleskin paper it's warm ivory kind of white anyways over here i wanted to write welcome um most of my sketchbooks i say like oh welcome to sketchbook number blah 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 this one i just wanted to write welcome <laughs> so i tried using a stencil but it looks so bad so i ended up drawing it myself, like this graffiti font that I found on Pinterest. I did not invent this graffiti font, so it was very much inspired by a Pinterest photo I saw. And um, yeah, it goes through a long, ugly phase, I feel. Like right now, the letters look really wonky, but I cut them out and I filled them with color and it looks all right. So I was, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. Now, I have to point out, this was like, this was way more scrapbooky than I usually go. Like this was really intense. There was so much cutting involved, so much like different papers involved. It was a headache. Like I'll I'll admit, it was such a headache to make this page, but I really liked it. Like I liked the final result and I wanted to keep on adding and adding and adding to it. So I basically just tortured myself, you know? <laughs> but this isn't how every first page goes for me. A lot of the time, the first page is actually really, really simple. Like in my last sketchbook, uh, I have a video showing me filling the first couple pages. It was so much more simpler than this, but it was also just as fun, you know? So yeah, all I'm saying is this isn't the only way that I fill my first pages. This is definitely a very unique and odd take on my part. I've never done something like this before, I don't think. Um, but I had fun with it and I wanted to experiment and, you know, do something new for this sketchbook. But yeah, here is the layout altogether. Sorry, the whole page isn't showing just yet. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I was starting to see the vision at this point because it went through kind of an ugly phase for a while. Um, oh yeah, this is me writing my goals for this sketchbook. And my goals are actually a lot different than they usually are. Usually when I write goals for sketchbooks, I put down every skill in the universe. So lighting, backgrounds, character design, like I put everything, every single thing. And then I never accomplish anything and I get super stressed out. But this time I kept the goals like realistic, but also vague. Um, I forget what I even put. <laughs> so yeah, I was about to not do a goals list, but then I had no other use for that paper there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna write a bunch of goals that I actually feel like I need to do. Okay, so I just went off 
on a tangent kind of. <laughs> like I had to delete maybe 12 minutes of voiceover and just like redo it because I forgot the whole point of this video, which is like how I fill my first uh, couple pages in my sketchbook or like how I start my sketchbook. Anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit about composition because I do get a lot of questions asking me like, how do you do composition? Like, how do you um, pick what goes where? And for me personally, it's all about um, like just my taste. I like things to layer on each other and I like things to look imperfect. That's, that's just kind of my thing. <laughs> so the letters in welcome, uh, you could see that the letters overlap and they're not lined up properly. They kind of just float around each other. Um, yeah, like the E covers the L, but then the L is covered by the C and so on. But I hate it when there's a pattern. So some of the letters don't overlap. I just kind of like the imperfect kind of look. and. This was all just, I like, I realized these sort of things about my taste just from experimentation. <laughs> it's really just whatever looks good in my head. And then for the, for the Spider-Man with the star, Miles with the star behind his back, <laughs> basically the upper left Spider-Man. Um, I like the fact that the star thingy behind him covered some of the letters, but not too much. Um, and then in return, uh, Spider-Punk and Miles cover that one. So like everything's stacked on top of each other, but it's not like one thing is in the forefront. It's like everything's covered by something in a way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Also, I wanted to make sure that some of the shoes still showed in their entirety in the background. So that's also something that played a part in the placement. Like I really like the chunky shoe on the far left that's white. Um, I really like that one. So I tried my best to keep that one visible. And I also like the dude's face. Um, I don't know how to point it out, but there's only one dude's face on the wrapping paper for Adidas. He's kind of like, he's under the sea. There we go. He's directly under the Red Sea. <laughs> um, and I tried my best again to keep that guy visible. <laughs> I also try to keep a lot of the words in the wrapping paper visible, but a lot of it gets covered. Also for the scrap papers that you could see in the bottom, like the start and finish dates, the goals, everything kind of just like overlaps something. And um, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it <laughs> because like a lot of it is just like natural for me at this point, which is kind of sad. I wish I knew like, how I got to this point a little better, but I forget. But um, yeah, also the hello thing is in the forefront because I wanna call attention to it. So yeah, that thing isn't covered by anything. Also, I noticed another thing about my scrapbooking habits. I hate it when paper is cut uh, very straight and perfectly. Most of the time, I really like it when there's texture and the paper looks like it's ripped. So with the wrapping paper, I very lightly went over it with uh, an X-Acto knife. And then I made sure to rip it like by hand so it has an organic rough look to it. Anyways, one thing I did differently in this video compared to my usual style is that I used a fine liner to do all the line art. I actually really love the scratchy look of it compared to colored pencils, which I usually use. Colored pencils tend to have like a softer look. Also inking in general with a fine liner pen is so much faster than with color colored pencils. So that was great. Anyways, over here on screen right now, I was thinking of adding washi tape, but I ended up removing all the washi tape. Um, it just looked, it looked too out of place. It wasn't hitting the angles that I wanted. <laughs> Um, yeah, here I'm finally coloring in the letters and they look so much better when they're colored in entirely. You could like, it, it hides the imperfections of the shape kind of. And yeah, also for color scheme, I like the primary colors for welcome, but at the same time, I wish I didn't make it primary colors or if I did, I made it like muted. Uh, I'm not entirely happy with how the bright primaries look. Uh, another thing I wished was that I made the blue purple. I feel like that would have looked cooler. <laughs> or if I did it secondary colors, like green, yellow, purple, that would have been perfect. But it's okay, I didn't think far enough ahead for that. So here I'm coloring the star behind Miles. 
Um, it's it's like a vivid neon neon green. Uh, I love the the Viva colors for that purpose. They're so vibrant and like neon. It was it was honestly amazing. Um, so that's honestly a pro for the set. Uh, it was really uncomfortable to use. So that's the main con. <laughs> but yeah, this green color here is so neon that I wish that the letters on the top, the welcome letters had green um maybe a darker shade it would have been it would have been perfect it would have scratched my brain perfectly <laughs> um, but it's okay it is what it is anyways here i'm painting miles and uh one thing about color for me is i very rarely use exact black especially since miles even in the movie like some scenes he looks like his suit looks very very black but other scenes it's like a bluish tint to it so yeah, over here he has a very bluish tint to the black. I mixed brown, dark blue, and yeah, it created that color. And then yeah, I really love how bright and neon the 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 red is on his suit. So I was happy that they had that color <laughs> in the watercolor set. But yeah, that's um, that's all I could really talk about for color wise, honestly. But I hope. I hope what I was babbling about composition wise made sense. And if you have any like other specific questions for composition, I'd love to try and explain it better and answer those questions. But yeah, for now I'm all out of like stuff to say about it. <laughs> oh, also another coloring tip. It's kind of a basic one, but um, whenever I'm coloring something and it has a dramatic light source, or if it just has like a really bright color mixed with a dark one, Something I recommend doing is putting the light color down first. So like in this case, the bright red of Miles' suit. Um, and then basically fill in the dark parts. Because then you know exactly where the red is supposed to be and you can avoid it better. But if you're just painting uh, the dark first, it's really easy to mess up and go over uh, what's supposed to stay light. Oh, also uh, for the Viviva colors, I thought that the metallic colors weren't actually metallic, but oh my god, in person, it's so shimmery. I was very pleasantly surprised, and it matched Hobie so well. Like, uh, I love how he basically just shimmers with glitter, basically. <laughs> it's so cool. But yeah, as you can see here, even with Hobie, I start with the light light colors. So I even make his vest like this neon blue color, even though it's not that color. And his pants, they're this like mustard yellow instead of black. And then I add the dark shades on top. And so the bright colors, uh, they still show through and I could leave some areas blank. So it looks like rim lighting basically. Um, so yeah, there's a little, a tiny watercolor tip. Anyways, I finish up coloring Hopi sometime, sometime this, this year, hopefully. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> and then I move on to the last Spider-Man drawing on this page. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this page turned out uh, composition-wise. And just like the the scrapbookiness of it, it, it really was like fun to do. And it wasn't too hectic. Like sure, it was a little bit time consuming cutting out all the paper, but like overall, it wasn't like stressful. It wasn't extremely time consuming. Uh, actually, maybe it was a bit time consuming, but it wasn't like a huge project to fulfill. Anyways, here I'm just shading in the darker parts of his suit. And then afterwards, I move on to coloring all the little graffiti stars, black thingamabobs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I made the color scheme for all those graffiti stuff very simple because I didn't want it to be like green, purples, oranges, everything in one spot. I wanted to just keep it oranges and blues. And I'm glad I did that because then the green from the other drawing on the left side, uh, it stands out a lot more because it's the only green on the page. All right, so I think the painting part is done, but the page is very much not done. I kind of enjoyed these paints. Like they are extremely vibrant. Like the camera is not exaggerating how bright this green is. And like the other colors are super bright. So that's a pro, but just the format is so weird. And maybe I should have brought my own palette, but I was lazy and all my palettes are dirty. <laughs> um, anyways, I don't know. 
I don't love these paints. Like I can't see myself purposely reaching out for them, but they're pretty good. Like they're not, they're not bad. And the vibrancy is just like amazing. Anyways, now that the painting portion is done, I'm going to do some more scrapbooking and I'm also going to touch up everything with my favorite, probably my favorite material in the world, Prismacolor pencils. Okay, so this is like the touch up phase of like my sketchbook process. Basically, after coloring and sketching and all that stuff, I go in with Prismacolor pencils because they just add saturation and you know, like a finished look really fast. Uh, they're easy to use, like the colors are all just there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, to fill up the blank space, cause there was like so much blank space on the page, I decided to torture myself even more and try my hand at uh, paper stars. <laughs> I've never done paper stars in my life. I'm telling you, I went crazy for this page. I felt like I really, really needed a big project to pull myself out of my art and motivation funk that I've been in for, I think, half a year now. I've just been feeling down and glum. <laughs> it's, it's an awful feeling. Anyways, I went all extra for this page and I'm happy I did. Uh, it, it really did drag me out of my negative thoughts, I feel. But yeah, basically this part of the process is just touching up, adding some final little things. Yeah, I eventually taped the stars down and paint them, which was like kind of fun, honestly. But yeah, that was pretty much it for this, uh, like starting my sketchbook video process. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it was like maybe insightful in a way. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Uh, I'll try my best to answer them in the comment section. And I'll also be making more videos like this. So if you have specific questions that would take me a while to explain, I'll try my best to explain it in the next video in this series. The next one will hopefully be out in like uh, one and a half to two weeks probably because there's a deadline that, the, not a deadline, but like I can't post it too soon according to the company that I'm collaborating with because there's like a delay or something. <laughs> but actually that works out for me because now I could really, really take my time with it. I'm thinking of doing something large scale and something that I could turn into an art print. So I'm really excited. I wanna start doing more like crazy artworks that take a lot of time um, because those really push me skill wise. And I feel like I need to be pushed, you know? I need something to challenge me and like, uh, like, hype me up basically. I feel like for the past six months, I've been feeling really down about my art, mainly because every time I do art, it's a rush. I don't feel like I could take my time and really study art and improve myself at it. I always feel like there's this panic, there's this rush, it has to be out, it has to be done. And it's really not healthy for like my art development basically because I don't feel like I've really, really grown and improved. In fact, a lot of the times I prefer my old art um, just because I could see, like I could sense that it wasn't rushed. It wasn't just for social media. And you know, that's something I wanna fix instead of just like mourning the past. I wanna work on um, like fixing the issues I'm having. Anyways, back to the topic of future videos and challenging myself. I'm gonna have hopefully a lot of videos coming out uh, in the future where I do more long-term and big projects. And so the videos may take more time to produce, but hopefully I'll be happy with the final results and, you know, feel re-inspired, re-motivated in that sense. But yeah, some of the ideas I have is uh, a Legend of Zelda themed fan art video. I've been saying for ages now that I'm gonna do Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild fan art, but I haven't all the way till now. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that one. Another video idea I have is just making more huge cluttered backgrounds kind of things. I also wanna make prints and stickers this summer. So that's still something that I'm working towards currently, but it'll definitely take some time. Okay, so I think I'm finally done the first pages of my sketchbook. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. It had a pretty long, not ugly phase, but like um, blank phase. Like I felt like there was something missing for such a long time. But I think the, the paper stars, which is a new thing. I've never done paper stars before. 
but I feel like they really filled up the space and like adding stickers and scrapbooking materials really helped in that regard. But I feel like this is a good place to just stop. <laughs> I don't want to cover up any more of the Adidas shoe wrapping paper. And there's nothing really else to write. I could draw Gwen and put her somewhere, but I don't want anything else to get covered up. So I think, I think I'm good for the welcome page. Anyways, my next video will probably not be on this page. It'll probably be on this one here, this spread here. And uh, I'm gonna make it a second part to the series, uh, probably with markers. So I'll be showing how I use markers in my sketchbook. And yeah, I'm really excited for that to come out. Uh, I already have a plan of what I'm gonna do. The words here are outdated. Like I have a different idea than what's up here. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I think that's it for today's video. I hope this was helpful in a way, um, but if it is not helpful, uh, I hope it was at least entertaining. Also, if you have any questions about supplies uh, or anything at all, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. And if you want to copy any elements from this sketchbook spread, please feel free to do so. Like, I'm not the inventor of like cutting out paper in this scrapbooking style. <laughs> like it's not, it's not, it doesn't belong to me or anything. It wouldn't be stealing my style. Unless you're like copying the drawings exactly, there's no need for credit for any of this. Anyways, let me know if you're interested in more episodes from this series. I'm excited to continue it and just like go more in depth into my process for the next couple of videos on like how I fill sketchbook spreads. This is just like one example of how I fill my sketchbook. Not all my pages are this like intense and like involving so much paper and elements and stuff like that. But yeah, let me know if there's anything specific you'd like a tutorial on or like any specific kind of sketchbook stuff you'd like me to do. And yeah, I could really use some suggestions to be honest. Next video is already kind of planned out, but it's flexible. Like I could change it at any time. Anyways, that's it. Um, I think I said that earlier, <laughs> but that's it for real this time. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video in a week or two weeks. Bye. Oh wait, before I leave, I just want to say Eid Mubarak to everyone celebrating. This video is coming out way later than I expected. So just now while editing it, I realized like, you know, tonight's the night of Eid and I hope you guys all have a wonderful time.